<clears throat> microphone check, microphone check. Welcome to the One Life, One Chance podcast. I'm your host, Toby Morris. Today, I have two very special guests in the house, uh, Mr. Adam Blake. Hello, hello. And Mr. Dave Kennedy. Hello. Just one hello. Dave, thanks for being here. Adam, you've been here several times. Thanks. I think so. Yeah. You've been, uh, I don't know if you've been here, no, not as much as Derek, but you've been here several times. So thanks for coming back. You're welcome. Dave Happy Kennedy, thanks for being here. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. So this is your second podcast? This is my second podcast ever. The first one was Holy Rocks? Yes, sir. Yep. That's, a, that's a fun one. It was. Um, I'm not, as we all know, are in this room. I don't know that anybody else knows, but I'm not super comfortable talking here, my voice, whatever. But Yeah, you sound great, though. Hanging around. Yeah, thanks. Man. And you look great. Thanks. How's life? I look super good on podcasts. <laughs> I got to, you know. How's your life going? Uh, it's good. Yeah, it, uh, everyone's healthy, strong. Uh, morale is in a good spot yeah i made it through the pandemic i mean yeah i think everyone's still navigating certain aspects of that you know yeah but um is is that is that a thing i kind of heard that the other day is the pandemic over i'm kind of confused it's still called uh, the pandemic yeah, yeah. when people are like oh like you survived the pandemic i was like i mean yeah no it's still I mean, here I'm it's still, i think it's to just a demic it's just Sorry, down another to demic joke. another one jeez but i think yeah. i think it has the, to be announced it has to be announced that the pandemic's been it's lifted. lifted. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I feel like people have, which I'm happy about. Like I say, like you know, throw it at the wall, see if it works or not. You yeah. know, whatever as far as the solution or opening things up. But I'm just at the same time, <clears throat> I don't know. It seems like there's still so many like regulations and so many protocols set in place. It doesn't seem like, yeah, you're saying that it's past past tense. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like it's going to be like a ship. You know what I mean? Once we hit the brakes, it's still going to be a long time till we sort of slow Get everything to, down. Yeah. And, and, and actually well, that last part of the flight where they're like, oh, like, you know, everybody buckle up, but you still got like an hour and a half. Yeah. And it's like the, you've been <laughs> trying to get to Australia from here and you're like, oh my, you know, that last hour and a half is just brutal. Exactly. A long, brutal flight. There's a light at the end of the tunnel now. That, that's the thing. That's why I feel like things are starting to uh, open up. Max, only, you're interrupting the podcast, Max? No, I was oh, sorry. sitting on his phone. Oh, she was. Okay. So Dave, so Dave, um, were you born in San Diego? No, sir. Where were you born? At? I was born in Appleton, Wisconsin. Wow, that's right. Mm, yes. Wow. And wow. I'm Adam's looking. Like you well, can't I, see what his I facial expression. No idea. Did I forget Kennedy? about that too? I thought you Cali <laughs> kid, man. No, no, not necessarily. I, I think. I mean, I, you know, I learned to drive here. Uh, had my first kiss here. I think a lot of <laughs> aspects of development as a young youth came from California. So I would say essentially. Um, I'm a California kid, but I'm not at the core a California kid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had a bit of a path um, going from Appleton, Wisconsin. My family at the core is from uh, Gelsberg, Illinois. Okay. So that was actually my uh, Appleton was just where I was born. Uh, my dad worked for the power company or something, and just went up there for a one-off. And then um, that's when <laughs> I, I hell came. of a one-off. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and then we ended up back in Gelsberg. And then Galesburg to Wyoming to Park City to California. Wow, man. So when did you get to San Diego? B by the time I was 10. Okay. Yeah. So I've been here since I was 10. And um, yeah. Was that a big culture shock coming to California from those places? Um, not terribly. I, didn't, I don't recall it at that age. A big yeah. culture shock. And, I, and since we had been sort of bounced around a little bit for those first few years, it felt just like a new spot and um, things kind of picked up quick with some neighborhood kids and um and i really was i really i really really wanted to surf and um, okay so seeing that on the outside i was like whoa like i was excited i was excited to get here but yeah so when you knew you coming to california was your dream to start surfing or something yeah okay yeah yeah as a kid but yeah i was a but we didn't actually move very close to the beach so that was the complication and then surfing was super hard yeah and so as far as um a humbling even as a 11 year old 10 year old yeah i remember still how humbling it was to first like be looking at pictures watching movies and be like i was gonna get out there and just and once you're in it it's so different poof, so difficult yeah and you have siblings too are you a brother older sister and younger brother okay well they into surfing too with nope. you nope just you just a hard no right there <laughs> end of conversation <laughs> next question did you uh <laughs> wait, wait did you stick with surfing i did yeah, I did stick with it. Yeah, I, I, it's not so much a priority in my life anymore. But yeah, I was through my high school, uh, middle school, high school. It was it was everything to me. Yeah, pe people that surf get into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, like, it's, it's it's still at a core. of My foundation is being in the o ocean, and I've just reprioritized things and um, and 
you know, it's, it's there for me when it calls again, but yeah, the last years of my life, I haven't, it hasn't been something I've pursued too much at all. Like, yeah, you were doing competitions too and stuff, right? Yeah. At a real young age. And like I said, I was not on the winning side oh, so of you're those. You're pretty good, huh? Yeah, it was really, really uh, pretty it, good. I, what I had said earlier, I think it was a way to define it as saying I was comfortable, mm. but regardless of being good is subjective, but I felt comfortable. I think you're good if you can stand up. Yeah, well, so, your so. bar is set. Yeah, my my bar is low. My bar is low. It's quite low, but you know what? It is a big. <laughs> it is a. I would never. I would never. Um, I would never take it away from someone to that has a you know reached that as an accomplishment as as something where it's a. It is a big thing. It's a complicated thing as opposed to many sports. Um. Yeah. It is. It's something that is a constant moving target a variable that is unknown every time you catch a wave or go out and that's different than most anything else out there where it's a set um platform i agree and you're like that's what makes it so hard to even just be finally able to stand up you're like well i only got one shot at it today because it was so hard to catch waves Mm -hmm. it was so rough it was so cold it was i mean there's things out there that are trying to eat you potentially yeah Yeah. it's way different uh, than skateboarding it is way different than skateboarding i mean but the skate i think the longevity i mean probably is 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 where you win in surfing Mm. uh, compared to skating as far as broken bones yeah yeah, yeah. so 100 percent. and so how, how were you growing up as a kid uh like you a good kid did you um wild kid or no i mean no i wouldn't like uh, i think i was probably all right kid yeah i think i was probably somewhere normal i like mean school? i didn't i didn't i didn't always get along i hated school school was <laughs> the worst um <laughs> there was always something better to do than school that's why i think and um so i think i was probably in some version at odds you know um with things, but not anything abnormal, you know, it's not like I, I did a stint in juvie for stabbing somebody, you know, it's like, I, I mean, I, I didn't go to school a lot or I, you know, didn't do well in school at all. You know, I was fortunate enough to eventually graduate, but if that even means anything to me in my life now, I, it yeah, doesn't, exactly. it actually has nothing to do with other than, yeah, I don't even know. Yeah. I, I, but kids go to school. I don't know if, if you have, <laughs> for all just old guys listening to this, but I would still s- have to somehow promote my yeah, daughter education. to go to school. Totally. Yeah, it's a good thing. You play sports and stuff? Um, um, I, did, I, was, uh, I, was, I was big in, um, well, when I was young, I was big into tennis. Wow. Uh, but then, un- I want to say unfortunate, because I do actually still like the idea of playing tennis, but it got away from me really quick as soon as surfing and skateboarding mm-hmm. came into my life because there was, um, n- I, you know, no offense to any tennis players. I can't recall thinking there was actually like cool tennis players, <laughs> but, <laughs> and there probably was, but I think where I was at with the music I was listening to and being surrounded, you know, wanting to skate and surf, that was like, that to me was everything. And although tennis was fun, I, Actually, John McEnroe he was a badass back yeah. then. If you guys want to call him that, I, I think, I think, yeah, I think he's a badass in tennis. Mm-hmm. I think that's different than like a badass that's in skateboarding. Life. Oh yeah, that's you know, true. That's like, way I mean, different. I, I mean, that's fine. He wants to, you know, I don't know. I don't have any. I, I don't want to. It's, it's like, but co- I'm just saying that it's not like. A, it's not like when you're listening to things. When you're in, um, see, I was. Uh, 11 years old uh staying over at rob weedman's house and he's like yo check this band out and he plays me the circle jerks yeah and i was like oh that's freaking horrible (laughs) turn it off (laughs) but i ended up loving it but at that time at 11 i'm just saying like that didn't line up with let's say just that sport yeah yeah, you know whereas all of a sudden he's getting you know kids are getting their heads shaved and growing and doing all this stuff that i was like whoa that was really attractive or interesting Mm -hmm. and exciting and um unique and and tennis was conventional baseball was conventional yeah 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 Yeah. and it's hard to be unique and interesting in a very conventional environment and i think i was always attracted to just that out of the way yeah like weirdo your brother wasn't into it skating or punk rock and shit or not uh yeah he was but it's weird i'm not weird we we weren't like you and your brothers you know uh uh, we were only three years apart but i think our lives were still very separate Mm -hmm. 
at that time, you know, and, um, and I think we always got along, but we still just always had separate friends and separate yeah. lives and did, did different things. You're and, the, um, you're the oldest, or youngest in the family. I'm the middle. Yeah. Makes me the most normal. Yeah. <laughs> Some would say. Yeah. <laughs> the normal kids are the, um, the middle ones. So, so you're in school and you get into punk rock and skateboarding, obviously. Yes. And that changes your life. And yes. So much. And it does it affect your schoolwork probably. Yes. Are your parents yeah. bummed at it? Were they yeah. strict? Um, they were, they were at maybe odds with it, but not nothing vocal. They didn't try to like really. I just remember certain things, certain kind of like hey, about friends or people that I was hanging out with. Mm. Um, you know, kind of being like hey, do they make your life better or something like that? Was yeah. that you know, was that a good influence in your life? That's kind of like the where they kind of came at it. You know, the 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 words they tried to use as yeah. far as helping me with direction. But, um, but I don't really recall like anything like really, like I don't have any like traumatic thing where I like really wanted to express myself and they were like, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, you play, go ahead. Uh, when did you pick up guitar? I was just going to say that perfectly, <clears throat> Adam. Uh, uh, probably right at 10 years old. Wow. 10 or somewhere like that. I, I actually played the, or maybe it was, um, I played the violin. Nice. Um, uh, when I was since I, well, when I was four years old, I started three or four. I started playing violin, and um, my mom's my 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 aunt uh, was um, a professional dancer. She's in the Chicago ball ballet, and then her husband was in the orchestra as a first chair violinist. Wow. And um, so I think that was my influence or that was someone that like said like, Oh, like that's why they put that instrument in my hands. I don't know really why it got to me, but it did. Mm, but cool. I did not like it. And mostly <laughs> I didn't like it because it was always classical training and stuff like that. Yeah. I actually remember, you know, just the way it was, you the <sighs> teachers, whatever, like actually kind of, slapping you with the bow if you don't have you know your posture is not right i mean as, as a kid i was just like that's i hate this because you're not even, i'm not even getting to play and you're mad at me you mm. know like you don't like the way i'm sitting here and you just literally smacked me with your bow to like straighten up bring my yeah. elbow out and, but i did it for you know for, you know five or six years and then my but i think my mom knew i was always at odds with it and struggled with it and so she at one point um said like hey like you don't have to, it's your choice yeah you know if you don't want to play you don't have to but you have to play an instrument like what do you want to do wow and i was like yo i just saw the sick movie called la bamba <laughs> <laughs> richie valens was like the coolest dude yeah. i could have ever hoped to have been or <laughs> anything now i didn't even scratch the surface of richie valens of course but that was my that was my get into wow. uh, guitar was that dude. Wow. Yeah. So, so, so were you a good violinist? Are you comfortable? Know, I, I don't <laughs> <laughs> circle back. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't even, I don't remember. I, I actually, I still have my violins. Uh, they wow. need to be re re refurbished. refurbished, but I was kind of thinking about it, but it's a, it's a pretty tough instrument to listen to when you're all by yourself. Mm. It, it, it kind of seems like there's a theme. Right? You've got like mm. tennis and violin is like the country club option. Yeah. And then there's the street option. Yeah. Which is yeah. Like yeah. The guitar and yeah, skateboard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 You definitely yeah. chose the latter. Yeah. Yeah. As it went, you yeah. kind of. I mean, I always liked that. Like, I liked. I was influenced heavily by movies when I was a kid. And so you see something I'm like, oh, I want that. I want that. You know. Yeah. Is that what skateboarding came in too? Thrashing or something? Or. Actually, yeah, surfing was my life. And I just, for some reason, skateboarders came to me totally. like i was a surfer in uh with skateboarder friends i didn't have surfing friends so i yeah. skated because i just that's how i fit in with my skateboard friends mm -hmm. or skateboard. You a good skater calling that was a good skater i was comfortable, comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you could do tricks street skater yeah yeah i mean i you know i've always been tall and lanky and yeah. kind of goofy looking but um but i yeah i liked uh get around and try to keep up with everyone try to be able to skate the spots that they were skating and never have to dictate like, yo, I can't go to, I can't go there cause I can't, mm -hmm. uh, I'll just sit around, you know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that was always my goal. Even with like being in the water is I just wanted to be able to participate in whatever environment, uh, other yeah. people were participating with, not necessarily like 
be the top spot, just be just be in the in the mix. Yeah. So when you got the guitar, that that changed a lot for you. Started playing guitar. Yeah. I don't know if it changed a lot for me, but it just gave me a new focus and actually like game and I enjoyed it. You loved it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it um it took a while to like really connect. I ended up meeting a friend a few years later and I was fourteen, fifteen years old. That was like he's actually good. And um yeah. he gave me a lot of and and I and he pushed me to like another area, you know. And in as far as wanting as far as playing and playing with people and yeah playing in bands and stuff so you started bands in high school you in a band yeah yeah what were they called i played in a band called them them okay yeah it was horrible but (laughs) i mean everything about behind the idea the name was bad it was just you know like let's go see them i Mm. I we thought it was was funny yeah well i don't know i mean because i remember we covered songs from uh, the Go Go's to um, the Exploited to nice. um, uh, some uh, No Effects. Um, you know, it was just kind of a mixture. I don't know if the style. I don't know what you would call it. You know, nineties. Yeah, nineties. <laughs> early, <laughs> early, ni- early nineties. You know, and then I mean, I was I had no real um, connection to a particular scene but i was listening to bands like uh grill biscuits and yeah, yeah. so I, I but i didn't know that 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 stuff really was still so prevalent you know i just had come across it you know and i was yeah. like whoa i dug it um but i didn't know that it was too much different than listening to something like um um what's that band well i'm not gonna remember right now but um it, when I first listened to Nirvana, let's say, or yeah, something yeah. else, it was just music, you know, and stuff. And or I listened to Nirvana or um, Bad Religion, or you know, it was yeah. you know, being fourteen, fifteen years old, I was just listening to stuff. And I, prior to that, and reason why I, the Circle Jerks was such a shocking or abrupt uh, change to my ears was because I was listening to things like. Um, uh, Howard Jones, nice. uh, Depeche Mode, The Cure, nice. and awesome. stuff that might, yeah, yeah. And, um, stuff and that stuff actually probably has a little bit more longevity in my life because I can still sometimes listen, you know, I, I not sometimes, but I still quite enjoy that much more than I would probably revisit some of the other stuff that actually influenced my, which I do think is at the core of my morals and different things that yeah, punk yeah. rock and hardcore kind of brought to me is totally. the way I live my life still currently, but sonically it's not as much as like when i'm cruising around mowing the lawn i'm probably not listening to that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you know so did you get exposed to um were you like did you were you partying as a kid no no never no i a uh, minor threat was like i was like i lined up with that right away i was like hell yeah that's what's up that's um, amazing and also because as a kid um when you're running around with a skateboard surfing shaved head or long hair or whatever it is and you got other kind of rowdy friends and you got a lot of grownups that are staring down at you, kind of judging you for all this stuff. Already. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so I always wanted to be like, Oh, you think I'm like that, but I'm not, I'm mm-hmm. like this. Like I never even touched that stuff. I just, I do stupid shit because I'm stupid, you know, not <laughs> <Yeah>. because I'm, <laughs> cause I choose to do dumb shit. Um, I think that's, um, that's that's where that comes from like where so it was almost like and then so i'd already kind of made that commitment to myself yeah because <clears throat> i didn't want to be that kid in the locker room that was like yo like yo we went to this party last night and we drank a 12 pack and i was always turned off from any of that kind of um conversation straight away yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and uh and so when i started getting introduced to some of these bands like like minor threat or and i was like they had lyrics that were like whoa like it really it was so l- exciting because i was like listening to this band this guy's screaming he's got all this stuff to say that i like what he's saying Relate so, to it. yeah so age. so yeah so i as soon as i had the, the support from random people in washington dc <laughs> or where yeah. you know or or new york city i was like yeah oh, i got there's like, I don't know these people and I, they might not even be alive anymore. <laughs> um, but I love what they're saying. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, that was a lot of support through all my, cause I never had like a group of necessary drug free or straight edge friends through high school, or, but, um, not at all. They just, it, but I found this, 
this music that supported what I liked already. And I just became, I was just, I felt even though I was different with maybe other people that were, that like to smoke weed or yeah. drink booze or whatever. I was like, but it's okay that I don't. And these guys back me and, and then I realized that these kids didn't care that I did or didn't yeah. anyway. There was no, the peer pressure was out because I was like, fuck no. And once you just put a pin in it, there no one, people push when they can. Totally. But yeah. if you just stand there and go like, no, it's, 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 then they just go, all right. <laughs> Most Making of the time. The same shit for sure. Yeah. And if they keep pushing you, then it's either, it's either a fight or you just realize you just, you just stop talking to each other, you know? It's so, yeah, it's fine. Adam used to, Adam used to get drunk to Gorilla Biscuits, right? I did. Great music <laughs> to get hammered to. So <laughs> anthemic, so positive. <laughs> You you did that before you were straight edge, right? Yeah. So, but so I th- I think one of the things that comes with hardcore is there's definitely a f- a philosophy built into it that is rebellious against a lot of things we take for norms. If you don't mm. really think about it, you know, like everyone just assumes getting drunk is normal. What yeah. grown ups do mm. and all these things and, and hardcore kind of can really impact, especially when you're that young. Totally. And really change the way you look at the world forever. And even if you don't, like you're saying, sonically, maybe it doesn't resonate with you as you get older. But those those mm-hmm. questions that it provoked you to ask, you carry those with you for the rest of your life. They're going to impact 100%, everything that you do. Yeah, that's what I guess. Yeah, absolutely. That's I agree. It. That's what my thread exactly mm-hmm. to me. There was the right timing when the first time I heard him. I hadn't tried anything. And then I heard it. And I'm like, wow, it's aggressive. I could skate to it. And they're telling me I don't have to drink to be cool. Yeah. Sign me up. Yeah, that was so, it, man. Yeah, so I've never, I never did anything. Yeah, your whole still. life. Wow, whole life, man, yeah. it's amazing. I didn't know that. That's awesome. It's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's you look it. great. For, you look great too for your thirties. Looking good. I'm 44, bro. I know, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, just kidding. I'm gonna be 45. <laughs> wow. Eventually, I mean, wow. everyone, everyone has to. I thought you were way younger than me. It's crazy. Uh, I um, yeah. That's I amazing. Mean, so you never tried nothing your whole life, just like me. That's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, never. Uh, I really. Am not curious at all. Mm-hmm. I, I it just passed me. I guess too. It's just like beyond me. Yeah, so. Once it passes that one party alive, I think it's just you're good to go. I think I don't know. Maybe I mean not that you weren't good to go before you weren't strong enough to stand up for yourself or what you believe, but still no. There's but pressure. that's a critical part where everybody. Well, if there's something um, somebody's telling you that it tastes horrible and makes you sick, um, you essentially at a influential part of. Um, part of your life you push through those points to get to the part where you actually enjoy it <laughs> yeah so yeah. yeah if you yeah i think it does probably affect you in that way where you're young and you want to participate and you want to do that stuff and you like adam saying it's the norm so yeah. you do it um so you push through like this is this is really gross and, I, and then the next day you're like i can't actually function i mean we got school five days a week and then now Friday, I'm going to go out and I'm going to ruin my Saturday. Yeah. And now maybe Sunday, but then Sunday's got to be cut short because I got to start again on Monday. It's the Good craziest point. thing to go out and, and make yourself sick mm. when, you, when you're a kid and you only got, at least, you know, it's all, you know, what you actually showed up for during the week. I don't know. But. See, the key is you just got to do it every single day. Then <laughs> yeah. you don't get <laughs> sick <laughs> anymore. Then it becomes normal. That's yeah, why, then, that's then your body gets used Adam to it. Yeah, that that fully time, functional yeah. teenage. Can't half-ass yeah. it. But Adam, you, did, it you did that in your later life, oh, right? Yeah, so you weren't doing that early. Yeah, so I, I actually started drinking when I was 13 years old. Yeah, which, you, But, but it, England is culturally different. Like bars, yeah. you, like our age of, of drinking is 18. So mm-hmm. everything caught it goes down. And and for me, it was tons of fun right out of the gate. You know, I was a pretty shy kid and alcohol brought me out of myself. Mm. And uh, then I discovered, like I got, yeah, I discovered hardcore through drinking, but I sort of took those lessons on board and and stopped <clears throat> drinking for a long time. And then- Were uh, you straight edge for a minute? I was straight edge for a-, for well, a Well, I remember that you, I don't know if you would remember this, but I remember the first time ever seeing you. I still remember seeing you. Which is the weird thing. You have puka shells on, big white t-shirt, <laughs> yes. and you were playing in a band called Shelter. Yes. Yes. And you were playing at a place called Soma in San Diego, California. I remember the show. And you were playing with a band called Earth Crisis. Mm-hmm. I yes. remember that yeah. tour. You guys remember that? Yep. It, I remember that tour well. <laughs> I do too. But you wouldn't know that because I was just standing on a wall. and and I, But I remember you. I remember your hair. I remember your yes. brown hair. Yep. And, I, and, and you were... Thinner then? Yes, I was. And thank you. And thank when you I for that, when Dave. I add the thin part right now, Thanks I'm just saying because he's so he's swole. He's, he's swole. He's in shape. Jacked. Thank you. Jacked. 
He's Muscular a man of man. he's a man of men yes. now. But um, um, but then he was young and uh, we're, we're, you weren't boozing in that band. No 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 yeah. no no. It was it was that band that drove me back yeah. to the back to the booze. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think I think Straight Edge was great for me. Like it yeah. it, it it really set me up for a period of my life that was yeah. was. You know, it, it got me from point A to point B. The problem was, is I still had some, like I grew up loving rock and roll and heavy metal. Yeah. And I kind of had some of that programming that came from that in me. So when I got into H2O, and H2O is a, is a very respect everybody's kind of personal choice mm -hmm. band, um, group of fellas, brothers. And uh, yeah, I just went off. Yeah. Went nuts. Yeah. We so, say that you had some dark passengers. Yes, that's a, that's a good way of putting it. But they have they have uh, they've gotten off the ride now, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, how many years sober now? Uh, it will be eleven years on September sixth. Wow, yeah, man. it's crazy. I remember the last time was that in Japan. Uh, Japan was the time, the last time before the last time. Last time was actually in New York with Scott Vogel from from Terra. Um, but it was the day <laughs> we arrived back from Japan. So yeah, wow. it was just sort of one long binge, and then and then that was it. Wow. That was it. And so um, your wife drinks. She does. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's um, Your wife drinks Adam. Uh, no, really, she doesn't. I think the last time she I saw her drink was probably like three or four years ago. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. No, I think. Yeah, my wife has a glass of wine. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's daily, but yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> put her on blast. <laughs> I don't know. You know, she doesn't start drinking at five or anything like that. It might be six, but. Um, no, no, she she, she 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 enjoys wine, and if it's a cold day and there's a beer sitting around, she she might drink it. Yeah, awesome. Um, all right, so you pick up a guitar. You're in high school. What are your goals in high school? Like, what do you do? When you, what do you want to do when you get out? What do you want to do with your life, Dave? Yeah. Uh, honestly, I thought I wanted to work on the docks. Wow. I wanted to be a, uh, a welder, and uh, I wanted to have a fridge full of uh, different kinds of exotic root beers. That's real. That's a hundred percent real. You said exotic root beers? I don't know. I just thought maybe there was a lot of root beers out there in the world that I didn't know about. Do you love root beer? I did. Yeah, I still. Wow. I don't really My drink. Root I, beer, I, yeah. I just kind of this I, I, soda from for me at this point in my life is I, it's a real treat. But I don't. Uh, it's not a goal. This is, we're talking about like a no, I know. seventeen year old kid. It's did like, you ever achieve the fridge with the exotic root beers? In no, it? no. But I can. I could do it now. Yeah, put it on the bucket I, list. I, the truth is, well, th I could do it. It's just now it, my <laughs> dreams have changed. Mm. I don't work on the docks. Um, yeah. uh, and uh, but I, I, I did. That's what I thought I would want to do. I wanted to have like a little house and it's nice. Uh, just live on the harbor. I don't know. What Surf? did you? What did you do then instead? I went into construction. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I started doing construction right out of school, but um music had started, I mean, uh, playing, uh, you know, a little hardcore band and stuff like that was a priority. Well, and, my dead body um, was the first one. Actually, the first one called Built to Last. That's right, Built to Last. That's yeah. right. Was that the uh, Fighting Irish dude? Uh, oh my god, dude. Hang on. I don't think we had a Fighting Irish guy. Yes, you did. It said Built to Last and it was like the Irish Oh dude. yeah, yes, we did. Yeah. I didn't even know you were in that band because I thought it was yeah. the other band. I had yeah. that t-shirt we must have played with you guys at the barn or something or somewhere. Oh, back yeah, then. maybe. I used to have that shirt. Holy shit. Yeah, we did have the little fight. That, yeah, that little dude, you know your own fucking logo. <laughs> dude, I, was, I, it's, I hate. It was a fighting Irish, just, dude. It was a long time ago. Yo, Dave, I know yeah. you're the fucking band. That's fucking yeah. that shirt we played with you guys. How do you remember that? How do you remember you had, had that shirt? You just, became, had you just became so much cooler. No, part. Dave, I had the fucking shirt we played with you guys. Built the last with Irish. I wore that because I have a fighting Irish. I'm Irish. Yeah. That was yeah, crazy, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's what's up. Okay, so that was your first band. Yes. And, um, uh, yeah, and it, you know, just with everything, I mean, construction worked well with that, you, w w with anything, I mean, you could, um, you know, come and go call, call, totally. like, call the contractors that you knew and say, Hey, I'm back in, you know, I'm, or I'm in town. I'm, I was in town a lot. It's not like we were touring, but I mean, we did do weekend gigs yeah, and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It worked out in my life and, um, and I did that for, <clears throat> that's what I did. It's awesome. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And then I d ended up, um, I think I actually ended up. Yeah, then that kind of definitely faded. Um, just our just went away. Yeah, and um, and then uh, I was I wanted I thought I wanted to get committed to music. You know, I, I mean, I did want to get committed to music. It was just hard. I didn't know what to do. I was looking at like I played in hardcore bands, and that's what I was a fan of. Yeah. But then I was looking at the hardcore bands that were coming through that were like the biggest ones, such as. Uh, 
I mean, if I were to say, I mean, Sick of It All at that time yeah. was a little special because they were on a major label. They yeah. are, they were, went on to like a Electra Records. Or, they might, they were actually, East in a, West. they were actually yeah. in a, okay, they yeah. were actually on a bus and it was a little different, you know, yeah. but I was, if I was thinking more like Snapcase yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, Strife and yeah. um, uh, Earth Crisis, yeah. Yeah, everyone was traveling in vans and as about as good as you could get was a trailer in mm -hmm. a van. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't <it> the truth. <laughs> right? A trailer in a van. And so I was, I just kind of, kind of clicked, and I was thinking about, yeah, we're we're practicing a couple nights a week. Maybe we're playing weekend gigs. Maybe we do a little run up to Seattle, back down. Maybe we, we did one like North American run that was just a, just a sh shit show, <laughs> but we did it, and um, um, not much direction in, in a lot of that stuff, but. I just started looking at like, and I was looking at the bands that were doing well. I was like, I knew I wanted to play music, but I was kind of starting to feel like hardcore was going to be a rough road mm. um, as far as a f future. Okay. You know, in music. What year would that be? Was it early 90s? No, uh, uh, 97, 98, okay. you know, okay. um, around there. Um, late, late, more late 90s. Um, and uh, I was just thinking that... Uh, so I was like, I want to do music, but I don't know where I'm going to go or how I'm going to do it. So I think I started trying to figure out other things with music at that time, like mm -hmm. direct direction with music, different direction. But then, um, so I was trying other bands that n nothing really came of it. Like, uh, tried doing, being in one band where we actually did some showcases and stuff in Los Angeles, which just made me feel gross Yeah, and it didn't connect that scene didn't work. But then I, and then over my dead body was actually already happening. Okay. And then they ended up, um, I can't remember if they lost a guitar player. They're just like, you know what? Why don't you come and play guitar also? I can't totally remember. Um, but then I ended up got invited into that band. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, was, that felt a little more comfortable, more, more, at least that was my zone. Yeah. You know, my lane. And so I went back and started playing in, um, over my dead body. And they were doing good too. You guys were playing all around, right? They told I mean, it's better so than built to last. I mean, yeah. Better than built to last. They had yeah. much, but uh, much more support, more yeah. of a net, more of a network. Plus, is a couple of years later, I feel like the development was fast from just being on message boards to yeah. actually um, full blown internet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was that singer's name? Uh, Daniel. He was awesome. Man. Daniel I remember Sand. Him. Yeah, yeah. Man. shot him out. He um, was awesome. He's um, <laughs> he's he's still awesome. Yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, all those guys are. Uh, I mean, so many of those guys from that world for me are awesome. Yeah. I mean, they're still what they are, you know, like they were all at our age that we're at now and, 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 uh, and they're still about that life, you know? Yeah, it's awesome. And, and still very familiar, still, I'm In the sure. Mix, going to shows, yeah. All that well, shit, I don't, yeah. I mean, I don't know about shows. I can't speak for that, but I bet you if you were to still put all the same guys in the same room, it would be the same jokes. It'd be the same yeah. energy and yeah. So it's. I think they're all still living a lot of. They're all living a lot of what they were saying back then. Um, it's awesome. The, the core. I, I don't know about a lot of the outliers and all that stuff, but uh, the guys that I'm specifically thinking of yeah. right now, they're still really, um, really the same guys. Yeah. You know, in a good way. I don't mean like they're stunted no, in their no, development. No. They're just. I get. What's, I, I I can relate. They're not full of shit. Exactly. Yeah. So you so you're doing construction, doing uh, over my dead body at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. and I'm still trying to pursue other ad ad avenues of music. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what to do, and I didn't know. I still didn't know where to go or what to do. So, um, yeah, but that's when, um, yeah, that's that's when I reached out to another friend of mine from being my teenage years. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Is this for Boxcar Racer? Yeah, for Boxcar Racer. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so we yeah, I don't know. We're supposed to transition into something here. No, that's it felt great, like a yeah. transition. No, it's great. That's smooth. That was, no, that was great. For, for your second I, I, podcast, that was yeah, really I, well I, done. And I, and I love Boxcar. That was really well I love, done. I love yeah, Boxcar Racer. It's I, such a I, great I, tour with you guys. Yeah, yeah well, Boxcar record. actually, I mean, so many steps in your life uh, brought me to wherever or anyone where they're going. And that one was a, it's just a massive one. Actually, being connected with you guys was a huge. It's um, amazing, for, man. Because um, there's so much. I don't want to just freaking go off on all kinds of tangents but yeah i mean uh yeah so ultimately uh, t tom uh, that um is a singer and played in a band called blink 182 
Yeah, I think the listeners heard of them for sure. <laughs> yeah, and um, so we all like, you know, when we were kids in high school, I had a band that we mentioned earlier called Them that was about as good as that name was. And then um, then we also had a band called The Get Down Clowns, a band called Iconoclast, and at the time there was a band called Blink. And we were all friends, and we all played we'd uh, have a new year's eve house party the bands would play we just like and but at the end of the day it was all built around skateboarding okay and uh yeah, i saw pictures of tom recently he can shred a song <laughs> skating he, jump ramps you know all what? this shit dude he he would he he had some tricks he did man he had some tricks yeah but um i don't think he could do that stuff anymore i'm pretty sure he, <laughs> but none of us can, you know i can't none of us <clears throat> not all of us are toby but um <clears throat> Uh, anyway, that was our group. No, that was our network when I was, when I, you know, in my latter part of the high school and in, yeah. into my just fresh out of high school years was that. And then so uh, Tom and I had been connected from then. He obviously went on to um, pursue um, more, you know, g- you know, doing all the. I don't know different sort of surf tours and stuff like that w- w- with Pennywise and yeah, 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 yeah. face to face and all those yeah a lot of those um the first tours, yeah, yeah. yeah and 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 Blink just just so much momentum and so many things and so it wasn't really too much in my spectrum for a handful of years but you know you're still a kid from being a kid you creates that foundation and that so it was still someone comfortable in my life, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So even though he was um, really out there living that kind of life, um, it was someone that at that time I was able to still kind of reach out to for direction. Yeah, uh, of, cool. Of where to go and, and what to do. Tr- trying to... Um, pursue music as pursue well. Pursue music in a different way yeah. or on a different level that would give me more opportunities. And, um, and so I did reach out to him about that and, uh, he was open to having a conversation and, and I think for him, he was looking, it was just timing. He yeah. was, he was, he, uh, from reaching out to him, asking him about what to do, where to go. I was playing, you know, I was in these bands, but I was wanting to be, you know, have, be able to have increased the size of my box essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, he was just timing he was looking for the same thing he had been wow. doing blink you know and felt like he had kind of categorized himself a certain way and he was looking he was fans of all these other bands like the refused and jimmy world and just a lot of things at that time even down to uh dashboard confessional like he yeah. was just he was just things that he felt like he's never going to be able to express in um blink. in blink yeah so it was just like me coming from one world and him coming from another world and and that's when we started talking about boxcar racer Wow, and where'd that name come from? Do you know? Um, uh, Travis, uh, a guy named Travis Barker, <laughs> um, a percussionist. A percussionist. Yeah, you might have heard of yeah. Um, he he came up with it. Okay. Um, and I don't. I feel like he might have even. I don't know if he had a band or it was just a band name he was holding on to from yeah. his youth that he was always wanting to use. Yeah, and um, and it was just something he was always wanting to. So I believe he he's the one that ultimately threw it out there. Yeah. So, and it came and went. Uh, I, originally, it was Tom and I were supposed to do kind of an acoustic record with some programmed um, electronic percussion. Yeah. And then I guess at some point, him and Travis had like a real in, a deep conversation. And Travis was like, nah, I want to do it. I want to do it. Wow. Because I think at the time, uh, Travis would probably really, um, I mean, it's so long ago. I don't really know, but he might, I think maybe he was actually programming and kind of dabbling with some electronic stuff or playing yeah, around. I with it. So, I, to be so I think, um, Tom was kind of looking at, maybe they were talking about it, but then Travis like, no, nah, I want to do this. Like, and then just all of a sudden became like a band. Yeah. It was supposed yeah. to, for a minute, uh, a band for a minute, you know, was but it just one album? Right? Just one album. This is like, this is blink at their peak. I mean, they've always been huge, mm-hmm. but when boss called job blink were at their absolute high it was like mania yeah for them. yeah yeah i believe so yeah yeah it was i mean i i yeah i don't know you i, I, I didn't live nothing. It. yeah <clears throat> no it was just i i don't know again yeah. i you know the inner struggles that an artist has mm-hmm. you know <laughs> yeah uh tom wanted to express himself and i think the band had planned on taking a break um 
it was after their cleverly named record called Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. That's right. Um, it was like 2002 or three or something, maybe, yeah. <coughs> right? Because uh, that tour with you was 2002, I think. That's when you and... Yeah, so it was yeah. right before. It was two, That record probably came out in 2000 or 2001. With the used, that was a great tour, man. And yeah. then, yeah, and then we went out in 2002, and that's when uh, the Boxcar Racer record came out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think they were going on some sort of little break. I think um, Hoppus, Mark, was going to do some acting. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I think that was what Hoppus wanted to do with some of his time. And then I think Tom, with his time, uh, wanted to do um, music that he yeah. was craving. Yeah. yeah. Was the single There Is, is that the song? That was one of them. Yeah, it's a great song, man. There's uh, some great yeah. songs in there, man. There were. Yeah, I love that record. Yeah. That's a cool was fucking record. Similar. Yeah, man. Yeah, I like that record a lot. W- what was the reception? Yeah. That, when that record came out, Dave, Dave, when that record came out, what, <laughs> uh, what was the re- well, our reaction? Was it, it was a pretty big record, right? I think. Um. I think I uh, overheard a kid on the side of the stage go, oh, please, please, Lord, just play a Blink song. But <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, no. <clears throat> I, yeah, it was weird. It was cool. I mean, but I, people I, loved I, it. I mean, the shows were yeah, great. Yeah, they did. I mean, the shows were great and the people loved it. But I think it actually kind of grew momentum okay. after that okay. part. For some reason, it just became a romantic idea that, that was, it came and went so fast and um, it's one tour, right? Yeah, one tour. I mean, we did some one off, some festivals, wow. some radio shows, some holiday stuff. Um, so it was kind of almost like a record cycle year, just no no backup from that record cycle year. And, um, and, um, yeah, it was just a year. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, so, so I mean, it was like, same as Hazen Street. Yeah. Same as Hazen Street. Yeah. Wow. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was just, uh, <clears throat> it was just kind of this, thing that i think kind of actually grew over over time you know from people missing it yeah and um and where when we did it it was just kind of like oh like a one-off thing and it kind of yeah. it, it's some version of i mean for me it was it was um it was really above anything i ever participated in or i mean not even until hazen street but go ahead, yeah, yeah until hazen street but not even <laughs> uh, i can't not even saying that's not giving it any justice it's just that for them though, it must have been. I mean, from where like what Adam was saying with where they were at with Blink, it, it definitely right. wasn't anywhere near that. You yeah, know? for you, it's like this is a bit. Yeah, it's a big yeah. Deal. So for me, yeah. it was like oh, I was just I was nauseous for the whole time and just waiting for people to, uh, you know, find out where you know that I didn't actually belong there. But wow, case of the imposter syndrome. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like being in those studios and being all this, I was like, fuck this is so weird but that was normal to them yeah. you know like going and hanging out uh, was it Convoy or Conrad I don't know these studios? fancy studios yeah, up here yeah, yeah, yeah. freaking ship station I don't, I don't if you it's like all new I mean, you come from yeah, my dead just, body I'm not I'm, I'm not even on the like I I actually remember when Tom we had talked about Boxcar and I was in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts playing some sort of a hardcore festival and mm. Converge was headlining Worcester Palladium, probably yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. But we were playing up in like the staircase. I know what you're upstairs. I said the Worcester. Yeah, Worcester Palladium. And then upstairs. so they had the main stage. Yeah, and you know, upstairs. And we were playing like I felt like on the three st- the three stairs. It's like you're playing on a table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah we've pretty done much. It, done it many times. <laughs> yeah, we done it. Yeah. Okay, and I remember being there, and I remember I was outside the Palladium, and Tom called saying, "Like, hey." this is real like mca wants to do this record like you've got wow. to come home now and i was like oh like i'm not in ranch Barado right now i'm in worcester massachusetts he's like you got to get home wow but um anyway but that was the phone call i remember that yeah but it, ultimately it was like something he wanted to do he, he he got real support from the record label at that time which was mca yeah um and uh and then um so that was different that's where i was coming from great tour man great, great tour. tour it's a great one tour to do yeah yeah well that was so bringing me to yeah getting to be with you guys yeah that was a big i mean because the reality is my going back to my lane or my zone or my comfort was you guys you know yeah. so getting to go and um when there was a potential uh tour and shows and h2o came up i was just like over the over the moon I didn't. I I could have never imagined getting to actually meet you guys in person. You know, let Thank alone you, that was amazing. Travel around and play shows with you, and then hang out on the bus. And no, that was super fun. Oh, that was yeah. amazing. That was just such a amazing tour. Bizarre. I mean, I got rusty <laughs> pistachio there. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just it was a real 
No, it's super I mean, fun, it, that really solidifies everything. I mean, I remember what I wore, um, the, you wearing winos and having your hair. I could never do the hair slick back thing, but you back and the in, Rancid yeah, videos. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was Time Bomb Time or Rudy. Bomb, yeah. or, but I remember just thinking, like, I wanted to like look just like you, I thought. You know, like <laughs> I was you, like, man. so I was a... Uh, and seeing Adam back in the day playing with Shelter. Oh, yeah. You know, like I was so familiar with you guys, you know. So, yeah, it you was. came from the core. You know, it, you know it, I mean? it was really comforting for me. I'd been to all, all your guys' shows. Um, I guess I through. even played with you. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you, you did. Built the last yeah. yeah, probably the bar. Um, but, you know, I'd, I'd definitely been to, um, you know, all your, all, all your gigs, you know. Mm -hmm. So, whenever you came to Southern California. So, yeah, it was very. It was. And, but I never really, yeah, I didn't have that personal connection, but then when I was able to be in that level yeah, it was and awesome. we were able to share that six weeks, seven weeks together. That was a long ass tour. Holy yeah. shit. You, you guys are really great to us too. Like yeah. we never felt like we were, we were, you know, like the lowly openers. You guys took really good care of us on that tour. I don't think I had anything to do with that, but. Well, thank you. Dave. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was all because of me. Were you, were you wilding yeah. on that tour? Uh, very, very, very much so. Yeah, that was full on rock fantasy. Yeah, for me. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah, getting hammered every night and being I, a jackass. We had fun. I, it, I, it was I remember, blast. Like I remember, yeah, we can't say, uh, but yeah, I remember things. Yeah, I do. I do remember. Best forgotten. I do remember going on the bus, uh, on Tom's bus, and he was smoking weed with my brother. And then leaving that bus, and I felt so lightheaded, like I got a contact. Yeah. I felt so far. Edge break. I, I Edge out, break a lot. I hung out, hung out there a little bit too long. They listened to Fagazi and mm. all this, and GB and Civ record with Tom and Todd. And I walked out, I was like, damn, yeah. this is sketchy. Just my head was like, maybe I, I, I just remember more. on that tour, it was like the first time I was around anyone of that level of fame. Because I just remember like I was at Denny's with, with Travis and a couple other people. Mm. And we were walking back to the venue and literally cars were stopping on the street. Yeah, and I was like, this yeah. is Damn. nuts. Like yeah. I've never been around anyone who's getting treated like that. It was, yeah. It was crazy they to see They were massive it. still. They had songs in the radio, massive. videos, all that. Yeah, they were. I mean, they they actually needed security. Which yeah. Is, you know. Fousey. Fousey Logue, yeah. Fousey Logue. Fousey Logue. Yeah. Wow, man. So that tour yeah. was like six or seven weeks, huh? I think so. Damn, yeah, man. It was to me. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so that that was that me. was 2002. Yeah, Hazen Street was the next year because our record came out in 2004. Yeah, so when we started, uh, you gave me a phone call uh, sometime shortly after that and into the next year, 2003. Yeah, about want, having this idea with Chad and putting something together and uh, <clears throat> asking me if I wanted to be a part of it, and I was like, um, yes. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, again, <laughs> uh, for my for everything that I had grown up listening to from being around, you know, I mean the the uh, you know uh, Freddie um, and being a f true fan of Madball, yeah, and um, and all you know, it was it was it was, it was uh, I thought it was very valuable to me, you know, being from yeah, just the suburbs of San Diego. It was kind of like how could you ever meet these people, let alone you know, actually share a meal and, and, um, you know, real, really sort of engage in lives with people from so far apart. Yeah. So far away too. Yeah. 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 No, it was awesome. It worked out great in the demo and the recording at swing house, all that stuff, writing the songs. And well, I don't know. Yeah. Would, and I, I, uh, do you remember demoing in Brooklyn? Yeah. At that law. There was, I don't know if it was considered a loft, but it was in Dumbo. Dumbo. Yeah. And that was, yeah, I just remember spending a lot of time there too. But um, Ahoya didn't actually remember that. Um, I do remember the Dumbo Studio. But yeah, I, I remember the guy was. <clears throat> yeah, but it was upstairs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, there was just a lot of interesting, you know, real life experiences of <laughs> yes. hanging out with uh, some other uh, Queens guys, George yeah. and his George and his mom, and making food, Colombian food, and you know, playing softball. And it's like weird. I'm just like super so New York, super New York so vibes. Surreal for me to be like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Yeah. What am I doing here? But I got here. I'm here and this is and everyone it was really as a big it's been a big part of my life. Yeah, and, it was uh, really fun continues. making that record and that whole project. Just, I'm proud of that record and yeah. Just the experience of it and the songs we made, you know? Oh well with that group of people, you know? Well it was just the uh, I think the timing of it, everybody yeah. again it's kind of the same story of things that I did boxcar for is the same reason why Hazen Street came to fruition too, is there was just some hopes 
of doing something a little bit different or allowing yourself to yeah. uh, explore things a little bit on a different level than what would have been expected to do things in uh, Mad Bull or H2O or yeah. different thing. You know, like there's, you know, as much as you, you do a band and you, you kind of, you're damned if you do or damned if you don't. Like if you stand still, people kind of get bored of you. And if you change, then they hate you. So, so true, man. Kind of damned no matter what you do. Yeah. <laughs> you're damned no matter what you do. <laughs> but, um, that. Yeah, and in, in, in that world more than any, I think sometimes with uh, hardcore is very uh, difficult to navigate. You're, you yes. know, in the, fact that you guys have now navigated it for i know it's a long time 20, yeah. 26 years yeah, yeah i was gonna say 30 damn hey, we'll get that at get some there. point we'll, but i mean the fact that you guys have done it and and stayed interesting and relevant had the energy for it is uh extremely commendable oh, we took our legs man. when we went to mca we got the shit kicked out of us like people were just so mad yeah man like the, before yeah. they even heard a note of music they were yeah, judged yeah well that's just that's the curse. Yeah, that you is. Know, the is. curse of you wanting to succeed and and I you still I still have it. You still have that sort of guilt of like I said something to Toby earlier today about like, well, I want to make money. I know that sounds horrible those words coming out, but the fact is that's how we keep the lights on. I don't mm. know what else mm -hmm. to say. I don't know how yeah. else to say it. Like, I don't yeah. want and if you can make that money doing something you love, yeah, how is that bad? How is that bad? I know, but man. you just, you know, you just, you just, you're told that, and it's it's part of that world is anti-establishment, anti-thing. But you're mm -hmm. like, yeah, but to, to keep this going and to create, continue to create, I need the support. Yeah, yeah. and so true. And I still want to create these messages of support. And um, and anyway. Yeah, it's just it's just it's a it's, it's definitely hard to do. And but you guys have done it. And I think I mean, I, I'm just from watching you guys headline at um, a, a venue, a local venue in San Diego to watching you guys perform on the Liquid Dave li Liquid Death live stream. Um, stream. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just always inspired to see you guys still having it and, and you know, it's, Thank you. It's exciting to still see you guys going. Thanks, man. He's try, he tries to keep it going, man. It's still fun. It's still fun. It's, yeah, it's still well, fun. it has to be, yeah. right? I mean, I yeah. always say, like, yeah. well, it has to I mean, yeah. you can't have one without the other. You can't, I mean, it it has to be, at the end of the day, it has to be fun. You can't do it, like, otherwise there's no, there's not enough. There's other things to do. Yeah. You know? I, I Even if, even though the h Tool stint was really short, I had so much fun. We did, like, six really great tours. It was a really fun year. We did so much in that one year, you know, Japan. Just oh, with uh, Hazel Street, everything we did that one year was so like awesome. There was a that was a packed year. I for, I mean, there was a lot of flying around, like yes. uh, um, what do you call it, like showcase, showcase. in New yeah, York, like dude. in the middle of tours, and the it was a weird. It was a it was a long year. <laughs> Warp tour. The first tour we did was story yeah. of the year. Opened up the House of Blues in Florida. That was the first show, first tour. Yeah, you found glory in yellow car in Japan. Uh, fucking pod tour in the u.s pod was a long one yeah that was a solid run um but you know what the, those guys are still like They're and awesome, that's still dude. part of my life like wolf um <laughs> uh the drummer of pod you know his side gig is he's a home inspector okay and he he can't they like the um, the guy that i work with that helped uh, uh you know the real estate agent that yeah he's like hey uh would you be uh is i i gotta we gotta hire that a home inspector would you be okay if wolf did it i was like wait what <laughs> and he's like yeah wolf i was like yes please like do it. yeah yeah please have him come like it was That's it's just awesome. cool that he still has small world uh people's side gigs mm -hmm. um you know and still very much so still involved with pod and yeah. they're still doing doing a lot of stuff I and, love you. Uh, it was so nice to us and too. Man. They're so nice, and and yeah. still to get a be on a like now a, now a different like a part of our lives where we're both now got day jobs and doing things that but we can still like somehow <clears throat> interact and intersect each other where where we were part of each other's life you know friggin' so many years ago yeah. and now we just have this like normal thing but yet we're still connected and people don't even like say that real estate guy or whatever people don't really understand like uh maybe woven my, yeah. my connection yeah um and i don't have to explain it to people but when we get us when i saw him it was just like dude what it was just cool it's yeah. cool it's, you know it's the foundations you can build um you know playing music and yeah. meeting people was the side was, was coffee your side gig that turned into something full-time real now 
like a real big deal for you, James Coffee. Yeah, Coffee is my full time, full commit. Were you always a coffee plan. drinker? No, no, not at all. I was very much so uh, anti adult, and uh, coffee represented adults. It did. Yeah, I was just talking about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, my mom drank Sanka. Then when I saw like Descendants in the eighties, talk about drinking coffee, I'm like. How much older are these guys? They're singing about coffee. Is that for my mom? Like, yeah. yeah. No, not to I be, didn't, go ahead. Not to be cliche, but I grew up drinking tea. Yes, you yeah, did. You know yeah. I mean? Yes, you did. <laughs> Which yeah. would me if I was in England, it would have been that would have been the yeah. adult grown up thing yeah. too. Like it was just what represented culturally. Like as like I felt like yeah, all that stuff was just what grown ups did, and I didn't want any part of it. So yeah. I tried to stay with it as long as I could. But also being straight edge and at a point in my life being vegetarian for you know. 10 years or something yeah which I'm, I'm not anymore but um i spent a lot of time saying no to things and um and so i think coffee came to me in my early 30s and uh in a way that i was just like you know what i'm i just want to participate in an adult social activity mm. rather than going to a coffee shop and getting steamed milk and a cookie yeah. which is what i was doing um, you're not drinking or anything going to parties so yeah like, i was yeah. like you know what i i, I like kind of i want to do i'd like pursuit i i guess i pursued it like i was like i'm gonna give this a shot i'm gonna try to get into this so because even though we can all sit at the table and it don't matter you you say you're drinking uh, apple lemon triple ginger juice <laughs> yeah. and i'm drinking a coffee from a, a shop down the street and um adam's actually drinking a coffee too i would naturally feel more connected with adam i think in a social wow like i think i felt like if we were going to socially because at the end of the day right him and I can have a conversation about this, just an added level no, of I got you. connection. You know, like right now I'm not going to compare what I'm drinking to what you're drinking. If we're just shooting the shit and just spending time together, this might be something where we actually kind of get to gossip about. Yeah, there's a culture, about, there's a culture to it. Yeah. For sure. And I think it comes with touring musicians as yeah. well. Like when you get to a new town, like you're looking for places to go. And yeah. Quite often it's like, let's find the best coffee shop in the city. True. And that's our day going yeah. there and having coffee and going back to the venue. And, later. and it could be a whole day if you go rusty. Oh yeah. yeah. Rusty, rusty will take you, take you around the house. I can then only some. imagine. Yeah. As much as I'm an enthusiast. Uh, yeah. they you're like, fucking 10 mile walk for i would be intimidated up. if yeah. i was traveling with rusty you better pack right a lunch you yeah. got coffee with rusty who have like 10 espressos would be totally yeah. fine they walk back yeah. like yeah. it's fucking yeah he he really is the coffee yeah. leader but i i see him maybe starting some kind of coffee related business too yeah he, me too he's been training as a barista and really putting time into the game he so. has yeah i've got i yeah. got a, and not i know he's actually been shadowing shifts at yeah, shops for free yeah, yeah for just a like a long time man. just to learn but yeah. i also have uh, just a massive text thread with him yeah about <laughs> hey 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 dave uh you know like how, how do i you know like what do you think about this it's, it's it's really fun for me because that's the thing is like we can be connected on so many levels and just to have like one more layer of connection it's it's beyond music really, yeah. yeah 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 so and it's it's yeah it's beyond music it's like we don't have to just have that it's like we get to talk about yeah the coffee yeah. or you know who, construction she's Constru working yeah on. i mean that's the thing yeah. it's like rusty and i you can actually Gab about a lot of things. Motorcycles, construction, yeah, well, coffee, not, guitar playing. Yeah, yeah you guys have so a lot of much YouTube. We, we never even talk about guitar. We got yeah. never like <laughs> yes. I've never talked to him about guitar. A because he's so much better than me. But that's the last thing on Rusty's B, mind right now. But like guitar. we just talk about, you know, he's just got so many other levels. Anyway, I know, yeah, I know. He, I know. He, he, so so I wanted to ultimately I wanted to I pursued it for that reason, you know, so that when you are say gonna get up and i see my friends they need that cup of coffee or they want to do this or they want to go search it out it's like i just get to be part of it too yeah. you know i feel part like of I, the morning rituals you're yeah there. and yeah, i'll be yeah, like you know what i will i will try that let me let yeah. me try that like or, or what, what are you getting I'll, I'll get that too or something you know it's just fun do you continually try different coffees yeah yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's an artistry to it you know when it's yes. done right yes i think so i know there's just there is Right or wrong is hard to say. Mm -hmm. I just like to look for intention in whatever cup someone has created. Did they mean to do that? Mm. Um, if they meant to do it, then I don't try to judge them on that. I don't say I like that or it's bad because I don't like it. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just means I don't like it. But they intended to do that, so they're doing a good job. There's a difference. And uh, I just get really grumpy when I see someone just be sloppy and not mm. not care. Is it safe to say that like my son loves Starbucks? Is that like for like a younger generation of kids? 
who haven't really stepped up their no, I don't expertise know. to no, something. No, 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 no. Not, not to dis, not to diss them because they're a corporation or anything. No, yet. no, I wouldn't but diss my them. My son's like, I love Starbucks fuck, better. Man. I'm like, all right, okay. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's it's like I said, it's a it's connection. Preference. It's really yeah. comes down to it's subjective. You can't. Starbucks a hundred percent intends to do exactly what they're doing, so they do yeah. a great job at doing what they're doing. Got yeah. you. But if you don't like it, yeah, then it doesn't mean that they're doing they're bad. It yeah. just means you don't like it. Tell, that's telling true. telling Max their garbage doesn't it doesn't hit him why yeah. would you try to influence him if he likes it yeah and they're doing what they want to do it's not like they're like dude I, they're doing it's not like right. when you talk to starbucks they're like they're like oh man i keep trying to do this other thing and it keeps <laughs> yeah. it just keeps coming out like that it's like they yeah. want to do that like yeah. that's 100 percent what they want to do and yeah and so who's to say that it's it, it's bad no, or, or it's or and, and the same thing is like someone to try to convince me that starbucks is good or that i should like them and be like well that's not really Cup, I don't line up with that. Just like, just like yeah. music, any form, different forms of yeah. art. Or, so that's what the artistry for me is, is subjective. Is that artist mean? If that guy was trying to paint a whale and he painted a dolphin, <laughs> that would be bad. And yeah. he's like, Dan, is that, that doesn't yeah. look like a whale to you? And he's like, no, bro. It looks like a dolphin. <laughs> it's like that's a bad, probably bad piece of art. Yeah, yeah. You know? But if that, it doesn't mean, yeah, that, that, I guess that's why I... I don't know if that's a good analogy. Well, you know like how this wine tasting, is there like a coffee tasting people yes, do? Yes, 100%. So oh, yeah. you, you drive and a bunch of people show up and try different coffees? Yeah. Uh, drive? Like you drive like the, like the wine. <laughs> There's not you, like you, a bus, well, like you go a like, sober no, you, rider. No, you, drive, you drive someplace in this <clears throat> field and it's, it's a nice place that people are sipping wines. Well, uh, we don't that. have the, uh, col- uh, well, uh, the... This coffee culture is huge, man. Yeah, but generally we don't have, so mm, coffee ultimately doesn't grow well in this environment at all. So... Um, so we don't have, there is Southern California coffees. Uh, there's one farm, one producer. There might be, I believe there's wow. another one that is trying, but <clears throat> not to, can you gossip? I don't, it's the juice ain't worth the squeeze is what, yeah. what okay. I, how I would say. Yeah. yeah. Like what it takes to try to grow coffee here in Southern California isn't realistic. It's, um, it's a cliche. It's, it's just a, angle or a catch just to say you did it or say yeah. it is it is what it is but what's your copy but i was gonna say there are there are definitely once you start drinking like certain kinds of coffee you'll develop a, a for want of a better term an educated palate where you start to recognize like there's coffee that has certain flavors intermingling and when you first drink coffee it just tastes like it's just coffee but as you start drinking more coffee and you start paying a little bit more attention you'll catch you know, maybe this one's got a little bit of a blackberry flavor. Maybe mm. this one's got a little bit of, of a chocolate hint, and it, it becomes really interesting. Like it's it's a lot of fun to drink good coffee. It's yeah. There's a lot of complexities to it, and um, from the way the coffee is ultimately, uh, well, everything from the origin of the coffee to the way yeah. the coffee's processed to the way the coffee's then uh, roasted, and then at the final stage, that's the big difference between wine. Is wine is kind of uh, you, you wine is the processing essentially becomes immediately bottled. Yeah. There's still so many variables to ultimately make a cup of coffee. Um, yeah. That complicate things with coffee. But um, when you do from trial and error and from trying and trying and trying, you do learn these little nuances and little things that do change within just a naked cup of coffee. Yeah, which I just call this is yeah mm. drip. And well, just, I, I, what we what we, what we say the pros of drinking coffee for if you're a healthy person like myself and I'm having a, having a rough go at coffee, I love it. I quit. I go back and forth. The, the best reason to drink coffee is because you enjoy drinking coffee. Yeah, everything else is a side benefit. Like mm-hmm. like caffeine has you know cognitive benefits. Obviously, it makes you you know mentally sort of up. Um, it will help with fat loss. It'll raise your metabolism a little bit. But these are these are minuscule compared to just the simple enjoyment of sitting down and having a cup with your friends yeah. yeah but 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 there is a thing where if i do like a if you do a juice cleanse or do any kind of cleanse uh you've told me that you can have a black coffee in the morning yeah well and, the, the, the and devil's how does in the help dose. or not help the devil's in the dose right like like a cup of black coffee in the morning is it's probably gonna do you some good like 13 cups of coffee a day not so much you know it, it's yeah what, th- what's too much coffee a day it, I, that that does depend on the, the individual person, yeah. human, yeah. you know. Just like I mean, there's so many things that people are more tolerant or intolerant of, and coffee is one of those things where people can be more intolerant to either the caffeine or the acidic nature of coffee. Yeah, um, that will 
like you said, it gives you stomach just problems stomach. or just yeah. Uh, yeah. the caffeine gives you jitters. But I mean, also you have to reflect and try to track down how much water are you drinking in your day? Yeah. How much, uh, yeah. what's your cal- caloric intake? There, mm. there has to be a pro and con and a push and pull to everything. There's, um, it's just what does, how does it affect you? If, if, if you're a person that's more intolerant, but you enjoy coffee, then drink less coffee. Uh, um, but um, I don't how know. many coffee shops do you have? Three. And you have a roasters too, right? Yes, and there's so a workshop. Deep in the coffee game. Yeah, deep. Deep in the coffee game. I mean, we're somewhere in the coffee game. Would you expand like to up here this way or no? LA's a real motherfucker, man. There's a lot of coffee shops here. Uh, not really worried about that. Uh, it's not because coffee is consumed by so many individuals so many times, you know, yeah. either a day or within a week that I, there's probably still well enough. If you're doing a good job, if I believe with whatever you're doing and if you do a good job, then there's room for you, you know? Yeah. I would never try to tell someone you, Oh, you, you, you play music. Oh, you know, there's other bands out there, right? You probably, no, that's a good point. You know, like yeah. uh, you're like, well, I think I can, I think I still have something to offer. You know, if you believe yeah. you, do something well Hold your own, your own yeah your you own feel thing. like you got something to offer then i wouldn't worry about like the other sh- other th- the competition if you yeah, want to call yeah, it yeah. that did, it's more just the environment did you have the coffee shops before angels or was that sort of something you kind of i started well so angels was pretty was really pretty steady from 2005 till 2012 uh, 2012 into 2013. Um, but I felt like going into 2012, I definitely was looking for, um, a way to have another outlet. Yeah. I knew, I knew music just for me was never, I was going to have to find another outlet, you know, I didn't know what it was going to be. Um, but I wanted to pursue, I wanted to have something else. I didn't necessarily want to stop playing music, but I knew I wanted to also have another focus for my just mental yeah mental out you know mental creative outlet individual outlet just something else to do that didn't depend on music you know it's hard to start thinking about like music for me at some point started feeling well a it's dependent on so many things Uh, you know you have other people in the band yeah yeah. other people band promoters people that like your band or don't like and your if band. you're in a band with somebody else who's in another band yeah so it's, it's like, just yeah. like i'm like uh, i like doing this and i want to do it but i'm it's just not it was really difficult to to do it yeah, you're um, making furniture too right for me so that was what i thought my actual outlet out would be would be um would be metal fabrication yeah i was wow. big into welding and all that stuff yeah so still am but um but yeah i was really like i like building st- making stuff yeah so i thought that would be my th- my thing but what i found is it was yeah was it hard? It's a hard thing to do. Well, what you find, yeah, I think. I mean, as far as it's a hard connection, if you're wanting to, um, if you're wanting to uh, sell it and make a living yeah, doing yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it's a different yeah. game that I'm not necessarily good at. Okay, you know, I I want people to like it and want to buy it, and I don't want to have to. How long did you try that for? Well, um, I mean, years. Okay. But I never, like I said, I was always pa- really passive. It was there. I would yeah, get gigs. Uh, do you were half in half out of it yeah yeah i just didn't know how to like get i thought it was gonna be my thing mm-hmm. but it was just something i could not i didn't i'm not a salesman you know so i didn't know how to like really push it hustle, you can make it but not hustle mm-hmm. it yeah mm-hmm. and justify everything the cost of it i want to sell a table but i want to sell a table for you know two grand and it's like and those connections are harder and then yeah. that's when coffee came in was like oh, i was like i was an enthusiast and i was a fan and i was like oh, i could sell this for you know three bucks it's so a right easier. from the jump when you started drinking coffee, you're like, "Holy shit, I want to, I want to fuck with this." No, 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 no. It was, it was took quite a few years. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But a, you know, steady progression of of being an enthusiast, of wanting to figure out, f- discovering a cup that I enjoyed, um, wanting to um, understand why that cup was different, or why, yeah. like what Adam was saying, why does it taste like this, and where does yeah. it come from, and seeing all the different variables, and asking more questions, mm-hmm. and then enjoying all the answers you're getting from enjoying all the answers you're getting um, from your questions and then just keeping, you know, purchasing or, you know, equipment and uh, as far as brewing equipment yeah. and eventually just hearing stories. You're like, oh, so it took a while. It took quite a few years, but, but eventually I started um, roasting coffee on my porch uh, with a little popcorn maker. Damn. And, um, and that's when I was like, uh, that was my, the last sort of, domino or whatever that fell that i was yeah. like whoa that like this i like this like 
and then I was like, how do I, this is actually something I could do. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah. From wanting to just, yeah. I was like, how do I do this? And that's when I started looking at. And so how, how soon after you started wanting to do the coffee thing that, that Tom reached out again about another project, which was angels. Well, I, that, so we'd already, well, I'm lost in my timeline, but Angels, uh, coffee didn't come to me until 2012. It came oh, at the okay. tail end of that. So we'd Got already you. been doing Angels for seven years. Oh, okay, my bad, my and bad, And then and the, toward the tail end of that, and then we, but Tom, we paused or whatever. I it just, it, things got, people went in uh, directions. Okay. I just sort of bowed out, I guess is the best way to say it. And right. I, I remember, was it you that pulled Adam in for the audition? Yeah, I got pulled in for like a. It was like when, wasn't really a. T- it was that, weird. Okay, so that was yeah, that was actually different because that would have been. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was an odd, odd moment. So that, gosh, I forgot all about that. So that happened before the second record, actually, and that happened because at the the original bass player of Angels and Airwaves um, didn't work out. Didn't work out. Lost his way at the time. Yeah. And uh, we were, so that was actually in 2007, 2000, yeah, early 2007. Like yeah. Yeah. Like it's fallen out twice or something. Yeah. So that was, um, that was then. And I don't really know. I think, and then I think um, ultimately, um, I just should never, I, it's, Tom always has his, that's when we originally brought you down it wasn't really a tryout it was, really, it was weird like with yeah. no we never played music no we, we, i think tom was i think everyone knew you could play yeah i think but i think i think it was just more how was it going to work and i think like tom personality said, wise or job I, wise? yeah i think so and how was it all going to come together and it, and then um tom was i had a hard on for this guy named matt walker um that Who we played had toured with from the, yeah. 30 seconds to mars he played in a oh, band yeah. called 30 yeah, seconds okay. to mars yeah and ultimately, I think that that all came from um, uh, Matt had experience with uh, a lot of like synth stuff, yeah, yeah keyboards, yeah, yeah, yeah. computers, yeah. Sing, I think. computers, singing, yeah, um, and, and it was like it was just he had a few more tools um, than Adam did. Yeah, okay. um, yeah I do bass Adam and jumps. Was, Adam bass was and jumps. <laughs> that's, that's insanely <laughs> handsome. Thank you, and and, and thank a you. great thank bass you. player. Great stage, good presence. jumps, amazing good amount jumps, of jumps, stage presence, uh, presence, all good that kind jumps. of stuff. Yeah, and hair, um, hair I think, game. and I was like, and I actually, I totally remember. I was like, and Tom was like, I, I really about Matt, about Matt Walker, and he was, I was like, that motherfucker wears eyeliner, bro. Like, mm. are you serious? Like, and he saw. I just think, and I was like, fuck. I remember being so worried about Matt Walker, and. Uh, but um, because I was I I was really into Adam, you know. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. And, I was uh, really into you too. He called back a second time, though. Well, we we did some other weird meeting thing later when the bass player quit. We went. You had me come to a studio and you wait. Like, so he joined. Listen to the record, no, huh? So that guy was joined. The, then yeah, he quit? Matt joined the man. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, Matt did. But then after uh, he left, you got back again. No, no, no. That was okay, years okay, years okay. later. Yeah. Dave, I got a call from you, and you're like, "Come to the studio. We 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 might need. You know, you might." We might need another bass player. This was, I met that kid, Elon was oh, there. Oh, really? Yeah, you put me to the studio again. Like later, way later, like years later. Oh, you're wow. like, hey oh. man, I don't want to, I want to do this again, but why don't you come down? And it was like another, like just come down oh, and hang out. Oh, dude, leave. you're right. Ugh. Yeah, it was another just, it was, I've we never out. played. It was just come and hang. Okay, so this is, and I don't know what happened there. That was, that's when things got. Pretty. Yeah, it felt like things like things things were really went off the rails. The yeah. <laughs> they went real yeah, I was like, way off the rails at this point. Yeah. Um, wow. So that was 2013. 2000. Yeah. yeah, that was that sounds about right. That sounds about because I remember I drove there. I was on the east coast. I was on the west coast already. Oh, yeah. Man, I don't totally remember. I don't remember. Adam was, I was, going, I was like, I'll just come by and listen to some so music. Adam was almost an angel, angels in well, <laughs> that, that's a way. that's a leap. So that's a leap. So again, well, they were interested. Uh, so the problem is we were playing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe can I, I say know. that Adam was too, too handsome and t- I don't know I don't know I was, I was really things. into Adam I love yeah. Adam yeah. so it was I like, was really into yeah. Adam <laughs> I was really, still really into Adam Next and one. I know Tom just doesn't like him I don't no, know no, <laughs> no 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 I don't know what it is but that things went th- that's ultimately when things kind of went off the rails yeah and I, think, I, remember, I could tell when I went by there I was like this feels like it's not mm, right it's a little yeah. chaotic mm. in there and uh, I don't really it's hard to it's so funny because. I had to do these recently for Angels and Airways, like all these little spots about, they're like, oh, walk us through the freaking lineage of like the different records and talk about, and it's as much fun as, it's any version of work is 
I can't really paint like all these great pictures of yeah. all this stuff. No, I mean, I hear you, yeah. we pursue it and we love it because it's part of us. But the reality is, and I don't want to sound like I'm bad mouth and are bitching about our choices we've made or if it's hard to do or any of that stuff. I don't really know how to navigate that part of it because when I talk about it candidly, it's not all rom- It's not all great. And it's yeah. not all romantic and we don't all get along. We don't always no, see eye are, to eye. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and it's not always, it's just, and so as you go back and you're like, they're like, tell us about this era. I'm like, it was friggin' hard. weird mm-hmm. and hard. And I'm like, I'm in it and I'm still trying to do it, but I'm hanging on, you know? How like, many years in that band for you? Well, I guess, I mean, if I said I had a personal hiatus, I mean, I don't, I, I was in it from, you know, for 2005, 2013. And then Tom was pursued still another record yeah. with Alon that was still angels, but yeah. I wasn't, I think it was just a weird time. Yeah. Man. And Fast. whereas I just sort of just, I don't know. It just didn't, it didn't, I didn't have any energy to pursue it and no one had any energy well, to pursue business. it. How long well, no one had, and, and, and no one. Yeah. But that was early. You know, that was early. I didn't, I didn't intend to, change focus or anything like that it's just the way it all worked out and yeah. it worked out kind of silently yeah like it just like no one called me and i didn't call no one <laughs> yeah but how <laughs> and, long how long james coffee now uh seven years wow so, yeah. yeah yeah so 2012 to now so is that seven yeah it's so, nine and then, and then how 2000 many, well i started that's nine years oh it's 2021 nine years <laughs> <laughs> well okay oh well that math is weird so yeah, so it's about it's at least eight going yeah. on nine years where I started and I, uh, from start. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. And how long Copy between that. the last Angels record and the new one coming? Um, uh, they would have released that, and I don't know if it was 2013 or 2014, and wow. the, the latest one that's coming out. Yeah, it'd be since then. Wow. I mean, but Tom's put out like a EP. Um, okay. but you know, like I didn't even know that thing came out. Like I, when we went and played this last tour, but you're like, in the coffee, you're like you're in your own. Yeah, I was, that's what I mean. I like I really like a full commit and i was like and i yeah i wanted to just i needed another i just needed another path another yeah, what, thing to like put nice, my energy is it nice having your own thing where your own boss you don't have to worry well, about other people's schedules and you fucking created this thing on your own with your brother yeah and it, and it's amazing you yeah. did, did all that you, you yeah. found your fucking thing yeah i think i'm very thankful for all that and excited about it and now when uh, reconnecting with Tom, um, uh, yeah. and, um, after having, um, a, a, a break, you know, from that world timeout, um, a time, <laughs> a, a timeout. Um, I also have, I think I just, yeah, I can, I can acknowledge it and be a part of it for all the things that I really truly want to be a part of it for not the, cause you're not just counting on it. You're not no, just it's counting really on hard. Music. Yeah. That's the hard part is when, when it becomes your hundred percent, and um, it becomes really emotionally um, difficult. Yeah. And I, 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 not not to talk about each show, but I think yeah. that's what our longevity is too, because it's not our hundred percent. Yeah, it might have been early nineties when we were yeah. like Epitaph and all that stuff. We had yeah. no wives or lives or other than or like yeah. mortgages or whatever. But for the past, I don't know, fifty more longer than that. It's just it's fun, and we get to choose to go have fun, and we yeah. still love it. And it's not we don't count on it. Yeah, when you can make the decision to be in control of your of of those um you know opportunities because you want to do it not because you have to do it yeah it's liberating yeah you never want to be held hostage by no. the thing you love you yeah. know what i mean like like you have to do it just for the money it, it would suck all the joy out so. well and that's what it does you yeah. know you start going like well we need to do it or i need to do it or yeah. i need i'm making phone calls yeah trying to force things and i'm like i'm not in control at all yeah but i'm still trying to like because i wanted it to happen or i want things to happen and you're just like it's really just like beating your head against a wall the whole yeah. time so now it's yeah and so reconnecting i think it's yeah it's been a much more it's yeah been a lot of fun um yeah. it's a lot healthier and um and i i did in fact need the time to develop a life outside of music yeah. um to then now be able to come back to music and be like oh i can do this and i can and so it must be a whole new uh energy of just doing it like for fun not to worry about yeah i mean it is it, it it is. I still find purpose in it. I still yeah. find, I still want to do a good job. It's, you know, like I still want to take it serious, uh, but I can just compartmentalize it now. Like, it's, yeah, it's like my night job. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, I just go in, 
um, I try to do my part well, and I don't try to force myself into anybody else's part. Yeah, when did you guys record that record? Well, t- the currently still recording. And, and, oh, okay. Uh, but, um, you know, I, for me, that's where I'm at. I'm not really... I'm, I'm invited back into this as... Um, I don't know, as a cheerleader? <laughs> as a live performer? or you Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not playing on the record. Um, right, so I'm live. there, I'm a part of it. I mean, I get the mixes, I get the, I'm, I'm, mm. I'm you know, I think, I, I, you know, I don't know. I think uh, my low impact uh, and uh, others' responsibility don't feel uh, a heavy weight of me being mm. around. Uh, I'm, I'm included on all this stuff and, I have my focus, so that works out really well for me is I get to just kind of, like I said, be an enthusiast and be excited about what's being created. Um, Tom yeah. Tom is um, at his age and where he's at and all he's accomplished. I'm um, excited to see the energy he's been putting into the songs. Yeah. And I think, yeah, him being forced, and now also being able to sit on the outside and looked at it objectively, I, I really truly believe he needs this time and space to just create things without other people and without concern of other people in the room mm-hmm. going like, Oh, like what if you did that? I'd just be like, fuck, I got a fucking, yeah. You know, I think he needs this to just, just go just kind of wild. Um, mm-hmm. and so he, him, he's been able to, add, um, last year, uh, after the tour and everything we did in 2019, he really was able to spend a lot of last year just on his own, just really, blasting through like tons of songs like uh not tons but just a lot for him he doesn't usually write that quick yeah and um because he doesn't he doesn't write like i think one time being close to afi the the guys were talking about like oh he wrote 120 songs for this record we're whittling it down to 12 and you're like what the fuck are you guys doing it's like they just crazy they they, they, they must just be and then they uh, then they hone it down it's it's Mm -hmm. different paths you know tom's someone that writes a riff and he fucking just works on it like he never lets it go yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so he writes one and it's um, like rusty same kind of style. yeah, yeah it's like yeah he like right like, if there's 10 songs on the record that's the fucking 10 songs yeah you know like there's no demos there's, there's no, no extra like b-sides no, or japan releases no, none of that. no fucking way and uh so it's just different different ways different processes and um mm-hmm. so he's he had the freedom and he just was like he really did, and he created stuff that I thought was really great. And he's worked really well with um, Alan, that's in the in in the group as well. He plays drums, but also does so much. I mean, he he plays drums in Angels, but as far as he plays guitar, and I'm like, ah, why bother? For you know, he's like, <laughs> he's just you know, he sings, he does everything. He does he's everything. just really talented guy. Plays yeah. drums at Nine Inch Nails as a yeah, side gig. Put, yeah, he it, does. Yeah, he does. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. remember you guys announced that tour in 2019. Yeah. It sold out really fast. It was yeah, so it did. for you guys, man. Yeah, it was weird. That was incredible, man. Yeah, well, you never know. I guess you know, like I don't know if anyone's gonna care, but yeah, a handful of people did. At least no, it was once great. They filled the room up. But hey, you have anything booked for this year? Yes, but um, yeah, but it's unknown. You know, we had a bunch of stuff last year. Obviously, like, a lot of story for so many, so mm-hmm. many groups, and uh, but it everything got shut down. And then um, this year we have stuff uh, for fall, uh, a, a good North American run. Awesome. But um, we just see how the world turns back on and see yeah. if we can go fire this thing up and go and. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is there anything you learned about yourself during the pandemic? Um, or taught yourself? You know, during the pandemic, I we well, are in a pandemic th- still. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. We, we. Yeah. Did you get the text message that? Yeah. Confirmed. No, we you're are still on it. No, we are. But <laughs> you Googled it while we were talking. Obviously, your business made it through. Uh, you guys. Yeah. Made it so that. I. I so much of my life actually i mean it definitely um the energy and uh people's emotions were uh difficult yeah. sometimes but we were our focus was kind of the same throughout the whole thing my day job my yeah. things that i was trying to accomplish um were didn't change a, a whole bunch you know yeah. i mean as far as the adjustments i had to make with work and that kind of things the protocol and um but ultimately, I was still doing the same thing. I was trying to roast coffee, sell yeah. coffee. I just had to do it maybe in a different way, but it still stayed, remained the same. I mm-hmm. never, I still actually got up and went to work and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, so I didn't have the time. I didn't, I didn't just sit in a room, you know, thinking like, shit, I'm like, what do I do? You know, you I think I did it. We had to do. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really get to like, I didn't all of a sudden come out and I'm like a fucking basket weaver or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah, I didn't yeah. get that. I saw, I, I did see a lot of people's posts like, 
like, like a banana I'm, learning, bread. I'm learning how to speak French and I was like yeah. what the fuck like I don't know <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, banana bread uh, was a big thing too. Yeah, was bread, that a big thing? Bread got big. Yeah, bread, bread, bread yeah, got bread, big yeah. in the pandemic. I d- actually, I do know bread, because I've been baking bread for years now. And OG I, bread break. <clears throat> no, not OG, but I became a fan and enthusiast so many years ago. So I've been doing a lot of sourdough, a lot of baking. Wow. And, um, so during the pandemic, I have motherfuckers like, I actually on my phone, I have a quick, like, because I was getting hit up so much about bread, I could just go boom and just share a doc like here. Mm, like and it, with it. like little videos and all kinds of things just because it would became such a standard thing. i was having to write out all these recipes wow and and and, and things of um you know how to uh, the how to's that i i just saved all all that and put in with like video examples and i could just shoot it off to people because it was like it was crazy like uh, how many people were hitting me up about bread yeah it's funny like we thought the apocalypse was coming and everyone's first skill is i'm gonna learn to bake my own bread yeah that's it that's the first thing i'm gonna do if this world's gonna come to an end i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna bake a sick loaf of bread to toast and yeah. toast in the morning what did you learn about yourself adam during the during the pandemic yeah um i learned that i i had stopped appreciating a lot of things about touring Mm. that was something that, that, that because i'd been doing it essentially my whole life like there's a certain sense of taking it all for granted like just how it is this is what life is like i mean like there, i mean there's austerity to touring for sure like some of it let's be honest some of it sucks like you know backstage yeah. in the middle of nowhere like bad wi-fi bad food just sitting there waiting all day to play waiting yeah. all day to do that one thing for like if you're h2o 45 minutes um <laughs> but minutes. uh all that stuff, I I kind of, kind of got to reboot my system a little bit, and now I'm like, man, I can't wait to shit in a porta potty. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to have oh. that bowl of chips and salsa. Yeah, you know, all those Backstage, little things. I yeah. miss all that stuff. The, yeah. the stuff I never thought I would miss, I missed it so much. So I learned that. That was big. Yeah, it's gonna be weird to leave again. You know, leave our wives yeah. and just go on the road I, again. I want to play shows. I'm, I'm. There's some anxiety about going on tour. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean for weeks on end, but. Yeah, that's the gig, right? Yeah, you, know, you gotta gotta get over it. I guess it's the longest I've been home my whole entire life yeah. for sure. Me too. Do you have anxiety because of the virus, or just now being no, away? No, nothing to do that, with the virus. Just yeah, missing, just being missing, away, like yeah, home, like, yeah, regular like, stuff. You, get, you like, got a little soft, you know, like well, staying home <clears throat> made me. Because I didn't play yeah. shows for seven years. Yeah, damn, so, um, that's insane. But so you stay was, busy with your business, though. Yeah, but I was just saying, I was super comfortable. Not playing shows, yeah. And not, yeah. not touring, and it had completely, yeah. it kind of, it really gotten away from me. I was really anxious, so so the anxiety that you're feeling about going and doing it again, yeah. I'm very familiar with because mm. it's and getting along and yeah. having different people and everything. It's a pretty your own space. If you're not conditioned for it, yeah. traveling, it goes away, and then you realize like I was like a trained machine yeah. in that world. I was I was ready for. It. I was yeah. getting on a plane. Like I'm not not not. Uh, I, I, like traveling, just in general, like you, yeah, it, it was gone for yeah, me. Sleeping like, at airports, like yeah, all that stuff. All you could do everything. You were cool, like putting stuff in a backpack. Now yeah. I'm like, oh shit, like what, what am I gonna do with all yeah. my stuff? <laughs> I know your space, everything. Did you yeah. fly? I've been flying. I've been flown. Haven't flown since uh, since the pandemic. Yeah, me either. either. Yeah, I've no. like that gives a little anxiety as well. Yeah, I don't know, but it's exciting at the same time. You know, it's like it's like but fresh yeah. and new. Well, again. you guys will you guys will have to do it. Yeah, we no, do. No, yeah, we're gonna do it. Yeah, we're definitely gonna we do have it. to do oh it. We do. We want. We do it because we're not because we love it. Exactly. We're yeah. gonna choose it. <laughs> you, and, and you get a tour too this fall, so that hopefully that happens. If, yeah, like until someone goes, you know, it's hard to say we're gonna do it. I mean, I know that somebody's gonna go and something's yeah. gonna open up, and uh, hopefully. But I'm I'm looking for I'm I'm hoping hoping it all goes that direction. Um, mm-hmm. My final thing: you, you can see yourself an optimist or pessimist. Oh, I'm an uh, optimist. Yeah, I was blind, I, I, blind. I, I knew the answer for that. Yeah, <laughs> blindly, I'm just like it's all gonna work out, and yeah. everyone's like people will curse me to death for it. But you've always been your own lane that way. Well, way I think always just doing your thing and not like I don't know letting the outside shit bother you. That seems like it, it. 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 Um, I. I. I do feel like I've been able to try to hone in on um the things that I find valuable and yeah. and block out white noise. Mm. Yeah, you've always been good at that. I think so. I know the answer to that question for Adam. He's a very positive person. Oh, yes. Positive. Yeah. You've always been like that, though. Yeah. But, but you had some dark times. Yeah, but they were sort of, they were still joyous in their way. You know, maybe maybe towards the end of my drinking, like the last couple of years, it got real dark, yeah. real bleak. But I feel that's a, the story of a life well lived. You know what I mean? You're going to have your highs. You're going to have your lows. And like when you look back, you want to have a mix of both because they give each other perspective. Like if you don't have the lows, you don't really have the highs either. 
Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd rather be like that. Yeah. I've always said the roller coaster. Yeah. If you don't have it, then you just won't really know how good you got it. Exactly. That's a good point. Someone's got to kick you in the nuts every once yeah, in a while just that. to kind of go like, dang, true I'm glad that. I'm not getting kicked in the nuts right now. <laughs> I have not been, I was thinking about this here that I have not been kicked in the nuts since I, in a good 10 years at this point. And I'd like wow. to keep that streak going. Oh well, yeah, but you, yeah. I'm just saying you get kicked once. You, yeah. You learn your lesson. You know yeah. what's happening. Yeah. Uh, where can, so where can people find your stuff? James Coffee is Instagram, right? Yeah, we got an Instagram, bro. So James Coffee, that's where they find your coffee. <laughs> James Coffee Co. Yeah, and that's basically your account too. <clears throat> it is. I mean, I, 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 you know, for better or worse, I'm the one that posts, but I, <laughs> I don't have a personal. It's, mm-hmm. it, 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 I do just. I mean, I, that's it. I, 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 I do that, and um, and that's my inlet into the rest of the social media world. Okay. Is through that. Um, and do you portal. think? Do you think there'll be another box car racer record someday? I don't know. I always say, um, if Travis Barker posts that, then that's when it's probably <laughs> it's <real>. going. Down. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't. I, not that I'm. I don't know. I, I'm just saying. I don't know. If he announces it, it's going down. Maybe. I, I don't know. Actually, it's. It, I think that's a hard one. But um. But maybe great. maybe maybe if him and Tom both do, you know, it says it's not going to come from me, obviously. Yeah, it'd be great though. It'd be great to be doing that. But same. I would participate in it if I was asked. To we be could a do part that same it. tour again, throwback tour. Amazing! Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Just so fun. H two O U's box car racer tour. That would be. Nuts. I hope so. Well, I, I um I appreciate your time. I appreciate your journey, like doing the record with you and becoming friends with you on the box yeah. racer tour. All that we shared, we shared a lot of time on the road together, and and now you're a dad. I'm happy for your father now, and your coffee and everything you're doing, man. It's awesome. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for having me up here, but also thank you guys for you know doing uh, choosing the path you guys took cuz uh you know I'm I'm for sure a person that has been influenced by you guys uh, you, over man. the years and uh, inspired me over the years and and a big part of um I don't know the choices that I've made are because of you guys thank you anybody like anything you want to say no thanks my brother good seeing you yeah. good seeing you I feel like it's been way too long hopefully it won't be up. so long again yeah thanks for listening everybody those Dave Kennedy Adam Blake Angels and Airwaves uh new record new tour H2O show shows coming up soon. We're going to announce something soon. When we figure them out. When we figure them out. Um, James Coffee. With, when, once I get back in the coffee, Max, he makes amazing coffee, by the way. Really? Yeah, so we'll get you some because I'm off it right now. I'll try it out. All right, thank you, everybody, for listening. <laughs> Bye. Hey, guys, thanks for listening. Um, please rate, review, uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet to this podcast, please do that. And whatever platform you are listening to this on, I'm glad you found me. You can rate me and review me on there also. So thank you guys sincerely for the support. I cannot wait for you guys to hear the next one.